Hey, good morning everybody. It's Batchack JW, yes, <laughs> radio show. We are back. Uh, there was a little uh, time of absence there because uh, those of you know, uh, work has been pretty steady for me. Uh, a lot of a lot of wowers just going in there. A lot of a lot of time spent. Uh, but you know what? Uh, it's nice to say that. I don't hate my job. <laughs> uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of really bad jobs out there that you know, we re definitely don't want to go. And I've been there. <laughs> I've been there so many times. Uh, I remember uh, working a job where I really, um, I would sit in a bargain lot before I'd have to go in. And um, I, I was, I think it was just just out of high school. Uh, coffee's good in the morning, um, but I uh, just out of high school, man, I really did not like that job at all. Um, so, anyhow, <laughs> but then I've had a, I've had a, a streak of some pretty uh, decent jobs that I didn't really, uh, uh, I guess, dislike to an extent where I just was miserable there. Uh, I've always felt like. I didn't want to do a job like that uh, after I've had a run with a couple of them. So, one of the actually the most fun jobs um, I can remember way back was I, I used to work at a, um, a Borders. I used to work in a cafe. That was fun. I've always, I, I've been a reader, always liked reading, buying CDs and DVDs. Uh, that goes all the way back to where I was always buying VHS. I had such a big VHS collection growing up, and I'm, I'm just—I I guess I fall right into that that age genre of, or not, not genre, age gap, or, or um, you know what I mean. I'm falling right into that age category where. I'm old enough to have remembered VHS. Old enough to have remembered my very first record I ever bought, um, or CD or what? Not even CD. It was a it was a cassette tape, and I had my parents, uh, my mom's old uh, discs. Uh, not this uh, the records. Uh, I had her old records and 45s and stuff. Uh, so and then I had all those cassettes too left over. So. That's what I was always doing. I remember when um, you know my my parents' cars had cassette players in them. Uh, the CDs were not really a thing yet, uh, although they were around. But they weren't. Uh, people were still running their cassettes, and of course, listening to my parents tell me about well before that was like you know a track and stuff. So it was interesting. Uh, I, I'm glad I I got a taste of how things were still were before they are now and uh, this kind of goes back to the video I posted right after the uh, JW's radio episode number 104 makes me want to go back in time uh, that was a a little short video I shot out at uh, old Tucson studios out here in uh, Arizona which is a really a special place to me because of everything I dedicated on channel and do uh, his channel name and everything like that to the Duke himself, uh, John Wayne, uh, Marion Morrison. And just the guy is just phenomenal. Uh, everything he did, uh, his movies. I never get tired of his movies. I could watch his movies all day long. So that place is really cool because. Of, if you don't know, that's where he filmed four key movies that, of his career. You have Rio Bravo, you have El Dorado, you have um, McClinock and Rio Bra uh, Rio Lobo. Uh, so, and or and uh, I believe El Dorado. Did I miss El Dorado? I you know it's, it's, I don't have enough coffee yet. <laughs> All right, but uh, El Dorado and Real Bravo is probably two of my favorite Duke movies right there. And, of course, Real Lobo is awesome, too. And, in fact, uh, if you go there, they have the poster of Real Lobo. And it's a, it's got him walking up to the, uh, the that little hut or where the the bad guy, the bad sheriff is uh, staying. He's been shot in the leg. 
and John Wayne's just, you know, he's doing his thing, you know, that's the, that's what he does, you know, he's gritting his teeth, and he's holding that wounded leg, but he's got his Winchester rifle in his hand, and he's walking up there, and the poster says, give him hell, John, <laughs> Classic stuff, man. Classic stuff. Love stuff like that. Love that time period in film. In fact, I just bought a movie. And I was just watching it. A great movie. I love it. Uh, Paul Newman and Harper. I just bought that. I believe that mid sixties. Great, great, cool movie. A lot of cool, a lot of cool little snubbies in there. I just love snub nose revolvers. The classic snub nose thirty eight. You get that from uh, watching uh, Humphrey Bogart and stuff. I also have the the just recently I'm trying to put back together a little bit of my collection I used to have. Uh, um, the Big Sleep with Humphrey Bogart, Lauren Bacall. Uh, I got that one, and I I also found Dark Passage with Humphrey Bogart in Bacall in. I found that in Big Lots. That was pretty funny. I found it in there five bucks. I couldn't pass it up. I mean, it was Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> so, but no, you know, it, it's for me, like when I watch some of these movies and stuff, like, uh, especially one of my favorites is Taxi Driver. Robert De Niro directed my Martin Scorsese. Was that 76? He's, uh, these, I seem to love all these movies that were well before my time, but yet I, that's what I grew up kind of watching and fell in love with so it's very difficult for me to get into modern movies or take modern movies seriously and now that's not the mistake that i don't like modern movies there are a lot of modern movies that i do like for one um i thought was a brilliant film no country for old men with tommy lee jones uh yeah josh brolin great movie i love that movie uh, but for me, there's something special about, say, like the movie Taxi Driver, you know, 1976. Watching it, for me, and watching how they filmed it, and the the way they're trying to get the point across, or the way they're coming across it, the detail in the movie is unbelievable. And just the fact that you're talking about a guy that's, that's living this lonely life, that's... and when the the camera would like film him at a phone booth and then just suddenly pan away down the hall it's just showing you the disconnection between a lot of things he's sitting at the table while other people are talking to him and uh, talking to him and he drops the alka-seltzer tablet or so in the glass of water and it just zooms in on it uh, reacting with the water and everything and then and, and you kind of just hear the voices fade out as the sound of the Alka-Seltzer in the water comes in it just that kind of stuff is really amazing for the movie it's just I, I really like the way they did it and, you know and I always watch these movies with the intention of like thinking you know while you're you, you know, a lot of times people see these movies now, and they just disregard them. They go, "Well, you know, we've seen, we've seen this and this and this is better. You know, this is better. Oh, this is so slow moving. But anything, you know, but they don't appreciate the the movie for what it is and the time period that it came out. And that's what I every time I watch some of these older movies, I always I feel like I put myself back in that time. I feel like. You know, I don't know uh, much about how it was living back then, but I know that enough where it was like, you know, people didn't really see stuff like this. Or, you know, so it was more impressionable. So when you're watching these things and you see, you know, the character go to a hotel room and buy a 44 Magnum and go blow a guy's hand off in the end, I mean, you're talking 1976. <laughs> yeah, up to that point, we really. I mean, at that point, it was like, what do you have? Well, you had Sam Peck and Paul's The Wild Bunch in 1969. Uh, you had Easy Rider. <laughs> it was kind of a, a, a jump, you know. We we're I still the the time was still shocked by ten years before with Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. <laughs> it was Psycho 61. 
<laughs> I don't know. We'd have to we have to check that out. Did you know that they used Alfred Hitchcock used chocolate syrup for blood in Psycho? And it wasn't just any chocolate syrup. It was Bosco chocolate syrup. And the stabbing that you hear is actually a knife being stabbed into a kasabi melon or something. Uh, if I remember right, reading about that was kind of interesting. So, Okay, I know we are now <clears throat> 10 minutes into this radio show. And you are listening. We have a lot of people that it's really neat that you listen at all different times of the day. Um, we got some people that... Uh, come back from the gun range and tune in and listen while they clean their guns. Howdy, Bob. <laughs> um, and I, I really appreciate, I get these messages all the time, and it's really awesome that to hear that you, <clears throat> the radio show has become a part of your Saturday morning. That's really awesome to me. That, that really is something special. That's really cool. So I'm going to go run through the comments on the last one that we had. And we have the Crazy Scotsman. He says, good show, my friend. Glad you're enjoying the rig. I am a uh, Crazy Scotsman. That is such a cool shoulder holster rig, man. I've always wanted something like that for my 29. Uh, it, oddly enough, I i don't have very many holsters. Uh, I'm just, it's, I really just don't. I don't have a lot of holsters and I, I did dabble around with making Kydex stuff for a little bit. Uh, it didn't last very long. Uh, I never really got into the Kydex thing. I mean, Kydex is awesome. It's great. It's it, I, I totally can see how the technology and everything led that way. I am an old school guy. I'm an old school soul. So to me, there's just nothing like leather. I just always am a sucker for leather. So, but I am the I uh, crazy Scotsman. I'm uh, gonna. Um, I got my package. To, I still kept your address on there, and I hope that's the return address. If you are listening, uh, so let me know because I need. I'm going to. I have a box of it. Putting stuff in. I'm gonna send you something. <laughs> All right, we have Bob Hartman. He says, "I knew you were into painting things when I first saw you paint and dye your uh, your my boots in Hawaii." Yeah, uh, my favorite color, uh, and I I don't know if I mentioned. I think I if, if those of you that follow my my vlogs and stuff, my favorite color has always been that uh, maroon type blood red burgundy color. I guess burgundy burgundy would be the more uh, better name for it but that's like my favorite color those of you that got that signed uh, card for me noticed how the background was burgundy <laughs> so yeah when I couldn't find a pair of uh, you know, boots like that I figured well I'll just paint my own <laughs> uh, okay we have O-Rods alright my firearms do talk to me. They're shy, though. My house has to be empty, and it has to be nighttime. Then they come to life. Oh, I like that, man. It's like Toy Story. Uh, with our toys. <laughs> and people always misconcept that. They go, how could you refer to your gun as a toy? When, when you get older, you know, yeah, you you go from playing with your, your toys that you had you know, growing up, and you just look at it, and just got your toys got more expensive, <laughs> generally, and uh, and there's more responsibility now with your toys, especially being a gun owner. It's like you know the responsibility is just, you got to make sure that you understand the responsibilities of owning that firearm and the the proper you know care and safety and all that. Well, we don't need a preacher to choir, right? <laughs> Arizona Ghost Riders. He says, I am gonna get this thing out of here am i gonna am i able am i am i gonna be able to get this thing yeah to the um <laughs> that gun was stuck in that holster that was the one i bought from the yard sale for three bucks yeah the, uh, uh yes uh you heard that right i bought a military 1911 uh i think it's a vietnam issue 
pa paddle holster, or not, not paddle holster, the flap holster with the, the thing with the U.S. on it. Those of you saw the last re that re last radio show know what I'm talking about. But I bought it for three bucks at a yard sale, and I restored it with Ballastol. I brought it back to life. It was pretty crispy, like uh, extra crispy bacon. All right, they got Varen K. Lots of good stuff on the table. I will try to get with you on the, the gun covers. Varen, if you are listening. Um, I have uh, gotten a couple ready to go. Uh, I've been looking at them. Uh, now, keep in mind, they're handmade. So there really is no exact uh, sizing or anything like that for them. So uh, that's the beauty of them. They're all handmade. So <laughs> that's just kind of what you get. Anyhow, <clears throat> all right, we have Mr. Holster. He says, how does the inland run for you? Um, have you tried hollow points in it? Like The Last Man Standing, my favorite Bruce Willis movie. Absolutely, I like The Last Man Standing. If you're totally into the Prohibition era type thing, uh, like uh, the, the old school, you know, Tommy Guns, 1911s, uh, nice classic revolvers and stuff, double action revolvers. Last Man Standing, it's a silly movie because it's totally just like, I mean, when you see Bruce Willis bust out with two 1911s, it holds a maximum capacity of, you know, 14 rounds, and even if you had one chambered, I mean, what are you talking, 16? And he opens fire on a bunch of bad dudes and uh, expends probably 62 rounds and then drops two seven round 19 of the mags on the crowd <laughs> but it's that's the funny part about it that's just the, it's just you just want to have a good old time watch a bunch of action and who better than bruce willis uh than busting out with that and doing it so yeah absolutely uh, last man standing haven't seen it check it out if you, especially if you love 1911s um, the Inland, back to your question, Mr. Holster, the Inland is holding up well. I like it. Uh, it's one of my favorites, uh, just go to, toss in the bag, take to the range, horse around, play with 1911. And that's exactly what I bought it for. Um, I painted it and did a bunch of stuff to it to make it look like a worn, uh, World War II 1911. It was kind of like, uh, if you kind of watched my channel for a while there, you saw my rooster shooter, which is uh, my John Wayne gun, my personal, nice, beautiful one that I had kind of just did my own. I uh, did the finish on it myself, did my own grips on it. It wound up just being my own personal project on that. And so that's what this kind of 1911, this inland turned into. So it's kind of cool to have two guns along that same time. Uh, yeah, I got the the John Wayne gun in 1911. Two of my favorite type revolvers, of course, aside from the Dirty Harry gun. <laughs> All right, Glock 17 says, "Good to see you, JW. It's good to see you too. I'm glad uh, there's a lot of you still chiming in and uh, checking things out. And we got Lion Quest Fitness. How's it going, man? Hopefully you're you're tuned in too." <laughs> he says. Um, Laugh out loud! I today I spray painted my grips on my Star BM9, <laughs> an ivory color. Thanks to you, yes. Uh, spray painting stuff is pretty. Uh, now, granted, I'm not going to take a a high end, but you know. Then again, you, you remember this: uh, when you go to spray paint something, or you spray paint your gun or something, uh, it's not permanent. You can take like parts cleaner or uh, I, you can go to Walmart get that parts cleaner stuff it comes in a spray can uh, what are the three four bucks uh, five or under and remove the spray paint uh, you want to be careful with certain plastics you use it on because it may eat away the plastic but you can wash it right away wash it off um, you know, uh, even if you have to go and get some uh, like one of those plastic uh, scrubby uh, dish dish uh, scrubbers that make sure it's plastic so it doesn't eat away your original finish or anything. Take the stuff right off. So, <laughs> all right, three wolves forty five seventy says, water. Where's the cone? <laughs> uh, today we got coffee. That's for sure. Um, spray paint did my Ruger five five six slash two two three and camouflage patterns scope and all came out great. Hey, see, I'm not the only one that's crazy, guys. <laughs> 
uh, I'm not calling you crazy. I'm just saying that we are um, uh, people like myself and Three Wolves and 4570, Lion Quest Fitness, any of us that has Mr. Holster, spray painted his shotgun. Uh, we're just adventurous, you know. Uh, same thing. Uh, people say, how did you learn how to take apart your guns? Well, really, I just got a screwdriver and got adventurous and figured, well, if I can't do it right, I'll take it to a gunsmith. <laughs> All right, so, <clears throat> Mr. Mark Mack, 85, have a good week, have a great weekend, JW, thank you very much there, and Eli Faust, military police holster, I guess that's what it would be, um, I, I don't know, I, I don't know too much about the holsters and the, uh, the, the World War II era of 1911s and stuff, I just kind of know what I've kind of flipped through a book and kind of read a little bit about them. But uh, really neat. I love that stuff. Uh, Bernard Flood, greetings from Ireland, all the way from Ireland. <laughs> you had me worried when you start shaking that can. Is <laughs> they getting ready to <laughs> call the guys in the white coats? <laughs> I knew that had to get somebody. <laughs> all right, Big Al, I'm going. I'm going straight out to find Ballastol. Good, sh great show. Yes, Ballastol is my favorite uh, gun oil now. I really don't like using anything else. Uh, however, I've dabbled a little bit in the Wilson Combat um, oil and grease or whatever lubricant. Uh, that stuff is strictly a lubricant. It's not a preservative or anything or to help uh, resist rust and corrosion. I use that strictly just on the rails and stuff uh, on my semi-autos. Uh, by that, I mean basically what a 1911. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> I don't shoot much semi-autos, for that matter. Okay. Alright. Scott F. says, You have rattle can fever. <laughs> uh, he says, Your 1911 looks good. Uh, good pair of 1911s there. Good stuff. Thank you. And we have Joe P. Good morning, JW. Fun chat this morning, and I really enjoy the irony of the Hawaiian photo in the background. Yes. <laughs> I miss Hawaii every single day, believe me. Okay. Says, we're, uh, we're by Peppered88. Hey, Peppered88, where have you been, man? All right, says, where did you get the Bogart? Also, do you have any Cagney? If so, where? I can't find them at Walmart, maybe Turner Classic. Um... I, and I know that you're, um, where you're like me, where you're kind of compute, not too computer savvy. Uh, a lot of times, I I do have to order these things off of Amazon.com, and I order quite a bit of things off there. But we are lucky here in Arizona. We have a, a store called Bookman's, and Bookman's has. It's just a great big book and movie exchange place, as well as some other cool little trinkets and stuff in there. But uh, a lot of times I go there and just shop in the classic section and find a lot of these movies. So, anyhow, <laughs> uh, that's that's how I usually get come across them is in those places or at yard sales uh, sometimes. But yeah, sometimes when you like the oldies, they're they're difficult to find. Uh, that's why I scoop them up when I do find them, but a lot of it is just searching and hunting them down. Uh, so, but I, I don't have cable, so I, I don't get the uh, Turner Classic movies or anything like that. But yeah, every now and then they do show up at Walmart. Uh, I just actually saw the Humphrey Bogart, and uh, it was like a four movie set. It was the Bogart and Bacall set. I saw it in Barnes and Noble. And Barnes and Noble will actually order them for you too. You pay a little bit more through them, but they will order them for you, uh, and they'll and they'll deliver them to the store. So if you have a Barnes and Noble in your area, check it out. So, all right. 454 Packer, great show, a relaxing Saturday morning and coffee, like old times. Ah, thank you. And a big thank you to 454 Packer. Uh, I love that 1911 photo uh, picture, everything framed up, beautiful thing. I, I just, I keep, I always keep it 
nicely put away and protected because it's so beautiful. I'd love to find a a nice a nice little protected area to hang it away from the sun. Sunlight destroys photos like that. Um, so you gotta be careful with that. Um, okay, Richard Landeros. He says, "Do you remember the movie called Cop with James Woods?" I think it was a movie that came out in the mid. You know, I've I've actually come across that somewhere. I saw it. I do like James Woods. James Woods has been a. I've always liked him. He's kind of a off. He's he can be a, a real wild cat actor, kind of like Nicolas Cage. I have to check it out. All right. <laughs> At least you did not bling out the 1911 like the cartels in the movie End of Watch. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, it, it, <laughs> I've always, I, I have flirted around with the idea of a high-polished 1911 cult or something uh, with uh, pearl grips, but not like fully encrusted with diamonds and all that stuff. I mean, it's a little too far. I, I do kind of like my uh, plain Jane. <laughs> you weren't kidding about Last Man Standing shooting a plenty... <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, Last Man Standing, it's just crazy stuff, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's weird, Last Man Standing, like you're saying here, is a, it's a story that's been adopted many, many times, uh, all the way back at, uh, Fistful of Dollars, but even before that, it was a, uh, uh there was a Japanese, uh, movie, I believe it was by director Akira Surakawa, uh, it's called Yojimbo. Uh, I think that's where the original story comes from. So, all right, Peter, exactly car. God bless. We are in dangerous times. What do you? Th what would John Wayne do? Uh, I think today John Wayne would shake his head, and um, I think it'd bring a saddened moment for him because of coming from the times. And seeing everything and seeing how it's changed dramatically. Yep, that's the sad part of it all. <laughs> so, if I was given a choice, I would uh, definitely would rather have lived lived further back in time. Uh, I feel like. Uh, feel like I would rather have grown up in like the 50s, 60s, and 70s. <laughs> Alright. So, what else do we have here? We had uh, another video I did. Hat tip goes the trees are blowing. And that was about reloading aluminum casings. Uh, usually by blazer or something that you're not supposed to reload those. Uh, Trees of Blowing did it. He did it with 9mm. He did his video on it. He did it. Which prompted me to try it. I've always thought about it. Now, cool thing is that the reason, one of the reasons is you could get it, load it, uh, shoot it at the range, and forget it. Just leave it. And of course, you can do that with just, you know, buying the stuff. But as a hand loader, uh, I like to just, you know, I just like hand loading my own ammo. I don't like really, especially 45 ACP. My gosh, that stuff is so expensive. But I don't know. It was fun to try it. Uh, to just peace of mind, in a way, it did work. Uh, I would not try it a second time. No way. <laughs> I think Trees did it, and he said he had pl uh, primers were blowing out uh, because I guess the primer pockets were getting a little loose on there. But uh, not definitely not something I would recommend to anybody to try because uh, you definitely want to take those proper safety precautions and know what you're looking for. Like Trees of Blowing is a seasoned reloader, uh, so he knew what he was looking for, and that's that's also that's why it prompted me to doing it. Because you always learn something from the people that have been doing it for a long, long time. They have the experience, so that's that's how I learned a lot about things that I've am, am into and the collection that I have. I learned about that stuff and gained a lot of that stuff by listening to people that were a lot older than I am and were around that racetrack a lot longer and did a lot more laps around the field. So, 
All right, and we talked about the worn look of my Inland 1911. Yes, uh, just a little bit of spray paint, Balistol, and some steel wool. <laughs> Um, I recently did the grips again a different color. Uh, that one there, if you notice the video, the grips are kind of reddish, purplish. Uh, I, I, it's because I, when I look at my, I have a Remington Rand World War II 1911, I look at that and I'm like, why is these grips kind of reddish brown? So I tried to replicate that with mine, which, eh, it worked out, but it didn't work out. I wound up just changing it anyway. Uh, so... I wound up painting them uh, and kind of going back to the vintage uh, brown, darker brown, uh, so finish. So we'll see how that looks on it, though that's what it is right now. I don't think I even have a video about it uh, on it yet. So also don't forget, check me out on Patreon, uh, BatJackJW on Patreon. And the way I run my Patreon channel is all the content on it is absolutely free. You can check it out, watch it. Uh, if you do decide to support me, thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated, and I know there's a, a little bit of you that have. So I thank you, and I post things there that uh, may not necessarily go on this channel, or uh, it may just be early. And I put it up there for you guys to check out uh, before I can publish it out on here. So one of the examples of that is the latest video that was just up. So this is what I did. That's the, the title of the video. That was actually available on Patreon for a lot of people to see before it actually went on this channel. So, all right. And the other video, yes, I know some people are like, when are you going to finally talk about it? It's been half an hour here. The Smith & Wesson Model 19 Snubby. Oh, boy. Uh, that's been something that I have always wanted. Uh, just I'm a sucker for Snubby revolvers, and that is one that I've always flirted around with. Now, I, do, I bought a Model 19 in 4, 4-inch four barrel, and so I wanted the Snubby to go along with it because the Model 19 really is the coolest uh, Smith double action. If you're going to buy one, it's got the adjustable sights. It looks super cool. It's 357 Magnum. Mostly I shoot 38, so you know it's a good strong gun with the lockup. And it's just, uh, and when you see the Model 19 snubby, you just know it's just such a beefcake of a gun. That's six shots in it. Cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Now, uh, do I like it better than my pre-Model 10 Snubby? No, because come on, there's something classic and cool about that old pre-Model 10 Snubby. But the Model 19 Snubby was something I had to add to the collection. I just did. And I tell you, the price, uh, when when I, when the guy named his price, or when I, I basically offered the guy a lot less than what he had it for. He hemmed and hawed, but I handed him the money, and you really don't buy these things for that kind of money. Uh, especially mine being a pinned and recessed model, early 70s. So, really cool. That's also what I believe Hal Holbrook carries in Magnum Force. I was going to do a video on John Milius thanking John Milius for making the Model 29 what it is today. <laughs> so, and uh, recently I, uh, I went out to the county range out here and shot my Winchester 1897 pump shotgun for the very first time. <laughs> went out to the trap range and talked to the gentleman out there, really nice guy. Uh, and he he was like he understood it he was like yeah I understand you just want to take it out there and have fun you know because I kind of felt bad I was like yeah I'm out here shooting this trap in the skeet range everybody else has got out here it's like a 28 or 30 inch barrel shotgun I'm you know I don't want to just like walk on here with oh here's my uh, my, my trench gun looking thing it's got only a 20 inch barrel <laughs> so but he he was totally neat cool with it he was like yeah you know it's all about having fun and that yeah, was uh, so to my surprise it, the gun works really well and I was able to hit quite a few of those uh, clay clay birds so I was pretty happy about that <laughs> so anyhow yeah um, trying to make up for being uh, absent on you guys I do apologize uh, but work and everything is just gosh it just weighed down uh, it does take time to sit down and have this chat with you all, but I do enjoy it greatly. So, uh, before I sign off here and uh, let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your your weekend, 
this of course is falling on uh, just my work weekend my work week here is just absolutely packed so but uh, the channel a little update before I leave uh, you will see also what's going on on the radio show channel but um, the channel here is coming very close to 10,000 subscribers that is pretty amazing uh, never would have thought that but I have a special thing I'm going to do I'm going to make 10 of these things and it's basically a copper band relate ra bracelet copper band bracelet boy that that wound up being a tongue twister uh, but it's a copper band uh, cuff bracelet there's gonna be 10 of them and it's gonna be given away on a radio show for you guys specifically uh, anybody who wants to, to chime in of course uh, I decided to not really do uh, videos just saying giveaway because then you just got people that just are searching just for you know free stuff uh, I feel like any one of you that uh, you know the people that watch a radio show you I mean you definitely are truly here watching these videos or listening so it's going to be uh, entitled when does when the channel hits 10,000 uh, whenever that is that that right the minute it does the next or whatever radio show it will be it falls on that's when it will do it and you will know because that radio show will be entitled 10k the bracelet will be special because it'll be I've never made just the band type bracelet I've always had them I always made the uh, it's more of like a thicker bracelet but this is just going to be a band uh, bracelet it's a get made out of copper in honor of John Wayne and it will have my channel name on it it will have 10k and it will say one of 10 and I will give away exactly 10 of them so there will be a, a good chance for all of you to get one so uh, I know that I have some people here from Ireland and I think uh, from England that are so uh, you know if you win one I will do my best and try to get one out to you. Uh, I will. I don't know. You know. Forgive me ahead of time if you do win. It may take me a little bit to uh, get one out to you, but um, I will do it. I, I just because it it's a milestone. Ten thousand subscribers. I want to make sure that I thank you all, regardless if you're in the U.S. or U.K., Australia, uh, Ireland, wherever it may be. So, anyhow, that's what's going on there. Uh, I know there was uh, a couple of bracelets I had promised to people or I had said I'd do for some people. It really was just timing. Uh, during the time when I was uh, making some other type bracelets and tinkering around with it, I had gotten really, really sick and was not able to make anything or do anything really but other than lay in bed. So that really was horrible. But... Uh, I will, uh, you guys know, and I hope you know, that uh, you subscribers, uh, there is quite a bit of you, and I try to take care of everybody. I try not, I never will forget any of you, that, you know, there's a lot of you that support me, uh, that has gone above and beyond supporting and helping me out with a lot of different things. I get a lot of gifts in the mail. You guys send me things. Uh, I don't forget this stuff. You know, you guys are really important to me. And don't worry, I always try to find a way to take care of you. Uh, I, and I'm not a, I'm not somebody that, that uh, I'm not a taker in life. You know, there's takers and givers. I'm a giver, so I always like to give uh, to people. I always like to give them, send them stuff, anything I can. Uh, so. You know, life has been really tough for me out here because yeah, I'm out here in the middle of the desert on my own uh, trying to make things work and trying to make sure that I can pay rent and do all that and it's a scary road uh, you know I've never done this in life before uh, it's a pretty big leap and you know to to have packed up my bags in Hawaii jumped on a plane and just left everything behind uh, mostly you know my mom I'm really close to her and uh, my friends I you know, just all my buddies and everything and you know looking back it's 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 a hard call for me because I had it really good back home uh, I did I really you know I had it really good in you know, my grandpa's house and my friends nearby I had a place to shoot 
and my you know my buddies up the road I could go up there to the mountain and shoot with them on their property make really cool videos some of the best videos I've made was up there and you know always had my buddies next door to me and I could just sweet on by and hey how's it going and check out some new cool stuff that they're doing and I don't have any of that no more and uh, it's it's quite tough and I tell you that's if anything that's going to make me turn around and go back, it's going to be those things. Because I really miss them, and I really miss that, all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, you have the gun freedom out there in Arizona. Well, quite frankly, as you can see, all the guns that I do like are not restricted. Uh, I really don't. <laughs> it's just me now. You know, I'm not bashing it. But I have no real interest in, you know, something that holds a gazillion rounds. <laughs> I'm a collector. I'm a old school person. I buy my guns for an entirely different reason than most people, and, and a lot of it is because I saw it in a movie, because I grew up watching a lot of Steve McQueen movies and John Wayne and Clint Eastwood, Humphrey Bogart, etc. And that's just kind of where what happened. <laughs> and guns just happen to be a part of that. So, uh, you know, <laughs> when I see when I see certain things, it's uh, you know, when I see like a, a Colt Diamondback or something, you know, it's the first thing I started thinking about was uh, uh, John Wayne and Brannigan, or Sharky's Machine with Burt Reynolds, and he opens up the suitcase full of money in the beginning. It's this Colt Diamondback, nice friend to have. Well, of course, Burt Reynolds had a Colt Python shoved up into his boot. <laughs> so, anyway, you guys take care. Like, share, and subscribe. You guys, again, you mean a lot to me. Thanks for being here.